In this video, which is day two of the streak, I am going to show you how to access the CAC.gov system for the Department of State when you're filing your immigrant visa. Yesterday, we looked at USCIS online, which I think is fantastic. Today, we're going to move to the State Department and their online system, which is a horrible, horrible mess. But unfortunately, you need to know how to access it and what to do. If that sounds good to you and you're in for the horror, you error, you are in to ride with me on this nightmare. Stick around. Welcome back to Frontera Tech Laws Law Great, the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. We focus on the real stuff, the real issues. We focus on the technology to help you out. We focus on the services and the tricks that you can use to do this stuff yourself. A lawyer is not always needed. Legal services that are cheaper do exist and some problems are really hard to solve. So we're going to try to touch all of those. I post Monday to Friday. This is streak two of the relaunch. So what are we doing today? Today, we're going to look at what happens when the State Department sends you this email here. Okay, it's going to come from national underscore visa underscore center state.gov. It's going to have a notice of immigrant visa case creation subject line. Now, it's going to have your name or the name actually of the beneficiary. If you're the beneficiary, if you're the petitioner, it's not going to have your name. It'll have the beneficiary's name. So we'll just call it John Doe beneficiary. And it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff telling you where you need to go, which is the seac.state.gov slash immigrant visa site. Okay, this is the magic, magic website. And then it's going to have two very important pieces of information, your case number, and your invoice ID number. You need both of these to log into the site. That's really it. So you're gonna look for this visa, visa case creation email. And when it comes, you're gonna have these two pieces of information to log in. So let's go log in where they want us to. I'm here at the homepage of the internet, Google. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in SEAC login and it will take you to that, to that really, um, odd looking uh, page that we need to be at for you to do the magic. Okay. So we have a couple of things here. We have a privacy act. We're going to say I've read the privacy act notice and we're going to take uh, a number that's going to actually get us in there. Okay. We're going to put this in. Okay. That's our case number from our email that we showed before. Okay. This is our invoice ID number. I'm going to say I am the attorney. Okay. We're going to go, you would say, you would say you are the applicant or the petitioner, but I am the attorney. Okay. We're going to go here. We're going to press continue. Okay. If you can't read this, like I sometimes can't read this. You can have it play it like that. Okay. So we're going to click continue. I'm using Google Chrome here. Okay. So this is one that just hasn't been started. Okay. Um, up here, which is all blurred out, uh, you have the case number, visa class, state of chargeability, your interview location, and the priority date. Your priority date is the date on which you can just continue to apply. Um, and you have this messages pane where the NBC sends you messages. You have your contact information where you should receive contacts. Okay. Uh, so where we want to go is we can't start it, right? You notice that it's not a hyperlink. It's, it's blanked out. The first thing you need to do when you log in is go to pay now. Okay. And what you're going to select is this fee. And then you would select the affidavit of support fee. Okay, so you would go one by one. Okay, um, once you select this and you would do it for this affidavit of support fee as well, you would press pay selected fees. You would fill out the billing information. Okay, you can use a routing number. Okay, uh, for your check account. 
you would agree to everything and pay it, okay? This means that you can't pay in this portion with a credit card. You have to use a bank account, okay? So you'll need your account number, you'll need your routing number from your bank, and if you don't know what those are, there are, you can Google, right? Or you can look at this um, image here. You agree and then you pay, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to fees. All right, so once you've paid everything, the application opens up, but it usually takes 48 hours. So, so we've got a bit of movie magic here. You know, we've went from an account where nothing's open to one where everything is opened up. Again, everything is blurred out. Um, and what you have here is what it looks like once everything is completed. You will have had both the affidavit of support and the applicant information uh, areas open up. The key is this status, which if you remember before was set on unpaid, is now set to paid, okay? Once that happens, the immigrant visa application, which is down here, opens. Um, and your affidavit of support will open, your civil documents will open. Here it says submitted, and the reason these say submitted is actually because we've already completed this particular application. I'm gonna click on this link, right, which would say start now, if it doesn't say completed. And this is what it looks like. Like the USCIS online system, the tab for where you can go is along the left side. But there, the, uh, there your, you know, information about the form you're filling out is here, estimated time burden 155 minutes, right? So they're saying set aside two and a half hours for this, which is about right. And you can move from tab to tab once, but here's the key. If something was not completed, if one of these tabs did not have complete information, unlike the USCIS site, this will not allow you to go on. Okay, it just won't. So you will have to complete everything in one tab before you're allowed to go to the next. And once we get to the end, the last part of the social security piece, it has a review pane just like the USCIS tab. It's not intuitive though, right? The USCIS thing is intuitive. You know, I think it's great for self-filing. The DS-260 is not intuitive at all, but it's important that you know that there's this review pane at the end and it's really important that you go through it. If you think something here is wrong on here, again, all the information on this column here is uh, on the right column is, is just blurred out because, uh, you know, we, we don't want you to see that. Um, you can you can press edit and go edit that specific information. OK, so at the Social Security, this is the last page. You can click review and you can review all your information. And if you don't if you think something is wrong, you can click the edit button, go back and review it. So what happens at the very end? Well, let's click through. Okay, let's click through. Okay, so this is good. It takes us through all the information stages. Let's click through. We have the yes, no questions. We have these questions. We have prepare information. Okay, you come to this page, okay? And here you can print your confirmation. You can print the entire DS-260. Um, and you can see various requirements for things you need to bring to the embassy, okay? So by the time you get to this, you'll have spent two and a half hours, gotten through it all. But it's um, this is what the inside looks like. There's no need to take you through it. I think um, it's straightforward in the sense that it's going to ask you information and you're gonna you're you're going to respond. This is basically what it looks like. There's no need to take you through this uh, because it's basically asking you information and you respond and you can see now how you can go back and edit uh, there's a button here to save you know to save and come back and then at the end once you're happy with everything you would sign so here it's kicked me out which is another one of the realities of this and appropriately we'll just leave it here um, the key with this form is understanding that in the email you have your username and password right your mvc case number and invoice id um, you have, uh, you know, tabs on the left when you sign in, you have to pay your fee first of all, wait 48 hours, and then you just have to get through it and make sure that you review everything. Um, it's, you know, intimidating, but it's doable. You've seen how the system just kicks out at the end. So one, you know, fair word of warning, this kicks out a lot. When that happens, I just like to clear the cache on my browser and try again. Um, but 
We don't have to talk about that now. We'll talk about tips for maximizing your usage of SIAC in another video. Anyhow, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you again next time.